Newcastle United are a top six club again at last. It's been a long time, even better than that. We're a top four Champions League club, nearly there. One more point will do it against the terrible, terrible football clubs of Leicester City and Chelsea, both of whom we will beat most likely. I'm going to talk in this video today about how we did it. It's an extraordinary accomplishment, what Eddie Howe has done and the great people above him who made it all possible and continue to make it possible. How have they done this to go from 20th in the Premier League in fucking November, October, December 21, January 22, to third in the Premier League, fourth in the Premier League by May 23? I don't think it's been done in Premier League history before, certainly not in the top six-ish era from about, I don't know, 2007 onwards or something like that. It has been an incredible job by Eddie Howe, but how on earth have they done this? They don't get enough credit, but that's okay. You can watch videos like this instead. Please remember to like the vid and subscribe if this is your kind of thing. But I want to talk about Eddie Howe and how he's done it. I think the first thing Newcastle have done since Eddie Howe came in is they've been unbelievable in the transfer market. They've brought in players that Eddie Howe has been able to significantly and quickly improve to the level that's required of a top four, top six team in the Premier League. Bringing in someone like Bruno Gamarge in that first transfer window was huge. Dan Byrne was huge. Neither of those players were were bought by a Champions League club or a team in the top six. Yeah, Arsenal were looking at Bruno. Supposedly, they've done okay since. So maybe it's not a big deal to them. Maybe they won the league with them. Who knows? Not me, because I don't watch them very much. But ultimately, Eddie Howe has managed to bring in those two. Uh, Sven Botman, another one, was playing in the Champions League. Took a step down in theory, but not reality. To come to Newcastle from Lille, who also have a good season in France without him. Again, what could have been with him? Making these players into Premier League ready, top four, top six footballers is not easy. If it was easy, they'd have gone to a top four or six club. If they were ready made, they'd have signed for, like, I don't know, Liverpool or Man United or not Chelsea because they've got way too many players already. But simply what Eddie Howe has done is improve these players very, very efficiently and very, very quickly. And that in itself is worth probably tens of millions of pounds. You know, Eddie Howe, I don't know what he gets paid. We're not allowed to know how long his contract is. Is it 100 years? We don't know. Maybe not. Um, what we do know is he probably is paid very well and he is worth every single penny, him and Mad Dog Tindall together and the rest of the coaching staff, to bring these lads that they've brought in to a higher level almost instantly is incredible. The transfer business done by the scouting team, Dan Ashworth now and others, has been extraordinary. But then to bring these players in is one thing, to identify them is one thing, to make them much, much, much better at this game of football is another. And they've done it so quickly. Everyone has slotted in seamlessly. We've got Anthony Gordon. The same probably doesn't apply to him, but didn't need him. Didn't need him. He can do it next season. That's fine with me. One of the main reasons that this has been so, so good from Eddie Howe and his players this season is they have adapted a high-risk, high-reward strategy that has paid dividends. It has been an unbelievable gamble from Howe to basically introduce this high suffocation, which sounds much worse than it is because we're talking about football, of course. And what we do to teams is we make them go backwards. We make them make passes they don't necessarily want to make. We make Hugo Lloris have to try and play it short. We make Brighton's keeper have to play it long. These are all things these footballers come into our games, particularly at St. James's Park, thinking they won't have to do. Everyone's got an answer. Everyone's got the confidence. Brighton the other night, we're going to play it short. We're going to fool you, Newcastle, by making a centre-back take a short goal kick to a goalkeeper. How will you respond to that? I'll tell you how we responded. Fuck off, Brighton. That's how we responded. We're going to press you. We're forward players are going to go into your six-yard box chasing the ball. The midfield players edge of the penalty area, some of the centre-backs into midfield. Such is our dedication to pressing the opposition, particularly when they've got the ball in their own final third, when the goalkeeper's got the ball from a goal kick. Some egos have been severely dented this season, and it has been a miracle to watch. What it does, it makes football interesting. If you want to get the St. James's Park on side, this is the perfect way to do it. Everyone's all in. Some of the biggest cheers I've heard this season off of for lads kicking the ball out for throwing when they didn't mean to. It, 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 in, a, in a weird sense, if you kind of showed someone that who, who didn't really know football, you'd be like, why is everyone getting so fucking excited over some lad kicking the ball out for a throwing? Is a throwing that advantageous? It's not about throwing. It's about the mentality. It's about lads who spend every single training session playing the ball out from the back, unable to do it. It happened to Manchester City. It happened to Brighton. It happened to Spurs. It happened to Manchester United in kind of famous scenes at St. James's Park. They all knew it was coming. They all thought they had an answer, and they didn't. That's a powerful thing. So Eddie Howe 
has managed to mix the right playing staff, the right signings, the right training sessions, and he's managed to really get the St. James's crowd to buy into what he's done. And it's a kind of toxic combination if you're not us, if you're them. That has made it very, very hard for teams to, to get out. And Newcastle have actually put in a series of performances this season at home that they've battered teams and still not got what I believe they deserved in terms of the scoreline. And I'll throw in their Liverpool nil two at home. Newcastle down to 10 men, lost 2-0 at home to Liverpool. Probably should have scored three or four goals when their goalkeeper was the man of the match in that situation. You know you're a pretty good team uh, when you're down to 10 men. Speaking of Liverpool, gave Newcastle. Newcastle gave Liverpool a six-point head start this season by losing both the games. Still going to finish above them. That itself is unbelievable considering the players they've got, considering the pedigree, the experience, the manager, the wage bill. Um, wow. To finish above Liverpool this season, what an achievement for Newcastle United. I think the final thing to say is that Eddie Howe in particular has kept his head. He has not been drawn in to the numerous barbs thrown his way. He could have got into a war words about lots of different things. Uh, Mikel Arteta tried it. How did that go for them um, in terms of Arsenal's second half of the season? Uh, Jurgen Klopp tried it. Well, we're going to finish above you, Jurgen, you prick. Um, loads of managers have tried it. Eric Ten Hag tried it. did work in the cup final, but in the league game, which is more important because it's about the Champions League, um, all this stuff, it hasn't affected Eddie Howe. Because Eddie Howe hasn't let it affect him publicly, we've been able to just not get involved. We're going to concentrate on what we're good at. And fortunately for us, what we're good at has been better than what the opposition had as an answer to it. So I think Eddie Howe has really, really managed the whole situation unbelievably well. What a leader he is. What a bloke he is. Yeah, he's a bit boring in the press conferences, but that's good. That's my point. We need that. We What we didn't need was hot-headedness. What we didn't need was red cards and players losing their heads. Yeah, Joe Litton made eight fouls, which is a record without getting a yellow card against Brighton. That's because they were all small fouls, even though they're probably very painful for some of the Brighton players. That kind of um, ability to control emotion, despite the crowd, despite everything going on, despite the history-making things Eddie Howe has done. What a manager and what a man. Hopefully in this video I've explained a few of the reasons, at least, why Newcastle United have done the unthinkable, broken the top six, broken the top four in the Premier League in the season 22-23. Thanks very much for watching the video. Please hit the subscribe button. Leave me a comment if you want to add to the conversation. See you in the comments. Bye-bye.